In this video, we're going to look at dyslexia and working memory. Let's try a little activity. I'm going to show you some letters. See how quickly you can make it into a word. Ready? Have a quick look. Time's up. Were you able to make a word? I bet it was pretty difficult. Some of the letters were jumbled up. They weren't even facing the right way. Think of the student with dyslexia in the classroom. That's a lot of what they experience. First of all, they don't have much time to process information. They have to do it very quickly. It's like everything is playing at high speed, like watching a movie at double the time. Secondly, everything appears jumbled up to them. It's hard for them to make sense of it. And third, some of the information can appear upside down. They have a hard time understanding the letters facing the right way. Think of Michael, the student with dyslexia in the classroom. He has a difficult time following the teacher's instructions. Even when he is able to write it down, he misspells a lot of the words. Some of it doesn't make sense, and he can't even say it back to you once he's reading his own work. A student with dyslexia has really poor auditory working memory. This means they struggle when information is given to them verbally or auditorily. They have to process the information, work with the information very quickly, and it's very difficult for them. Their post-it note simply isn't big enough to allow them to do that in a classroom setting. That's why you might notice a big disparity when they're talking to you and they seem fine, but when they're actually writing and have to use their working memory to manipulate that information, to work with that information, they really struggle in that particular task. Now, I wanted to know what kind of impact language would have on their grades. How important was working memory? How important was language? So to look at this issue, I had a couple different students. To look at this issue, I looked at two different groups of students. One of them had low working memory. They were 10 year olds who looked like five year olds. These apples over here. They didn't have dyslexia or reading difficulties. I then looked at another group of 10 year olds over here. They had dyslexia. They also had very low working memory. Their working memory also looked like an average five-year-old. I then looked at the grades of these two different groups. Would there be a difference? Would the group with low working memory but good language maybe have better grades than the dyslexic student with poor working memory? In other words, could good language skills boost grades and give you a bit of an edge? I found that wasn't the case at all. Both of these groups did very poorly when I looked at their reading, their spelling, their writing, and their math. Ultimately, if a student has poor working memory, it doesn't matter whether their language skills are intact. If they have poor working memory, they will have low grades. They will struggle in the classroom. So what this is telling us is that if we want to make an impact on the student with dyslexia, we have to be looking at their working memory. We need to train their working memory to see if to improve grades. That's exactly what I'm doing with Dyslexia Scotland in the UK. I'm working on a large scale study with children and adults with dyslexia using jungle memory. We're coming to the end of the project now and the results have been very exciting. We're seeing these individuals with dyslexia have improved IQ, improved working memory, and even improved grades as a result of using jungle memory to train their working memory. The bottom line is, if you want to improve learning, we need to target the foundation of learning, which is working memory.